Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily back up your computers using Synology Drive. Synology Drive is very powerful and you could do a lot of things with it. This video will just be for backing up PCs. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And we have a Discord server and an Amazon storefront. I'll put the links in the description below. First, let's go over some of the things that Synology Drive offers. So we could have anytime platform access. So access files 24 seven from your desktop and mobile platform. We have synchronization and backup. So keep your files always up to date and protected. We have smooth collaboration, which edits spreadsheet documents and slides together with Synology Office. We'll touch on Synology Office in another video. We also have powerful data management. So track how files are accessed and shared with powerful admin tools. We could access share files wherever you are. So rest assured you always have secure online access to all your personal and shared data, whether from Synology Drive mobile app, desktop client, web browser, or another Synology NAS. For now, we're just gonna be hosting this locally, but we may touch on doing it remotely in another video. So this is the Synology Drive ecosystem. We have our Synology NAS, which I'll be using the DS1621XS+. Plus. Right now, my NAS doesn't have DSM-7 on it, so it will be the older version of DSM. We have our NAS in the middle, and then we have our Synology Drive. This would be a web portal for regular users. In the middle, we have the Synology Drive admin console. So this is where we would do our admin configuration. And then we have the Synology Drive Share Sync. This is cross-site file sharing. And then underneath, we have a bunch of different clients. So we have a web browser, a desktop agent, a mobile app, and then another Synology NAS. We have a centralized dashboard, which we could gain real-time insights by checking server status, connected clients, last connection time, device type, and bandwidth usage. We can manage sharing. So check sharing status of publicly shared files and how many times they have been viewed. And then we could plan ahead so we could view consumption trends on file versions, database, and office files over time so you can allocate additional space if needed. This comes with an audit log as well as file ownership transfer. Now let's move over to my NAS and get Synology Drive downloaded. To get Synology Drive downloaded, we need to go to the package center. And then we could just search for Drive. We could see that we have Synology Drive server and I'm going to install it. All right, Synology Drive's now been downloaded and it says open. I'm gonna bring it to my dashboard though. Now I'll go to the main menu and then we're gonna bring Synology Drive server and Synology Drive to my dashboard. Here we have our Synology Drive admin console. We'll click on that. Security enhancements for newly installed packages will be better supported after a refresh. So we're gonna go ahead and refresh the web page now. Now it's done its refresh, we'll click back on the Synology Drive Admin Console. And it says, Welcome to Synology Drive Suite. The suite consists of Synology Drive Admin Console, Synology Drive, and Synology Drive Share Sync. These packages can be found in DSM under the main menu, and we'll press Next. Accomplish more in Synology with Synology Office. Go to the Package Center to install Synology Office. Right now, we're going to skip that, but we'll press next. And then it says, please enable your team folders. Before you start, please go to your Synology Drive Admin Console team folder to enable the folders that you want to access in your Synology Drive, and we'll press proceed. Now we need to enable the folders that we want to be seen in Synology Drive. For me, it's just going to be my PC backup, and we'll press enable. Now it pops up with versioning. So add version control rules to keep historical versions for important data. So enable version control with maximum versions of eight. We'll leave it at the default. And then we have our rotation policies, which we'll just leave on default as well. And we'll press OK. Now we get a couple notices that come up on screen. Number one, please note that users with read only privileges for the selected team folders can only sync the files from the server to the client devices. Any changes made on the client will not be synced back. You can go to the control panel in the shared folders to update the privileges. And then number two, please do not mount remote folders and virtual drives in the Teams folder, which have already been enabled. And we'll press OK. Now let's just have a quick overview of the Synology Drive admin console. So on the overview, it's gonna tell us a couple of things. It says the Synology Drive server is healthy, and then we have client device info. Right now we have a total of zero clients, but you could have the share sync, desktop client, and mobile client. Below that, we will have our sync client last connection time, 
and then we'll have the top access files by external users, and then we'll have the package usage trend. Under client list, this would show us the clients that we're using. Right now we have none, but we'll come back to this and we'll see that my desktop is in there. And then we have our log. So this is telling us everything that's been done. So at 9.33, enable Synology Drive Server. At 9.38, Mac Telecom enabled Team Folder Backup. And then at 9.38.39, System edited the privileges of Team Folder's My PC Backup. Under Settings, we could see the package usage and we could see the location. I just have one volume that's using 16 terabytes. And then we could calculate the usage, which we haven't calculated yet. We have Content Indexing, we have Performance, we have Email Notification Service, and we have Display Name. We also have Enable Disable Syncing, File Ownership Transfer. We have user sync profiles and then we have sharing and a bunch of different sharing permissions. Now let's take a look at Synology Drive itself. So we'll just click on the Synology Drive application and we can see that we have my team folder. So we have my PC backups. If we look at my PC backups, no PC is in there right now. Then we have shared with me, shared with others, recent start and recycle bin. And then we also have a few labels. Down at the bottom left hand corner, I'll click on where it says Mac Telecom and then we have settings, storage usage, we have logs, and then we have client. So we could take a look at the client list, or we could download the client, which we're going to want to do to put onto this PC. Download the desktop and mobile application now to sync files anywhere. We're going to download for PC. And then we're going to launch it. Now we're going to go through the installer. So we need to select our language, which mine is English. We have our Synology Drive client wizard, and we'll press next. We'll scroll down and then we'll accept the end user license and it will install. Now the client's finished installing, we're going to hit finish and this is going to run the Synology Drive client. The client's popped up and it says, welcome, Synology Drive client keeps your data safe and synced at all times. We'll press start now. Here we're going to have to connect to our server. So there's the Synology NAS, there's the username and then the password. I'm going to put in the domain name that I have for my Synology NAS. Then we're going to have to enter our username and password and press next. I don't have an SSL certificate right now on my Synology NAS, but we will do that in a different video. So we're going to proceed anyways. Now it's asking me for my two factor authentication. We'll put in the six digit code and then press OK. There's two different tasks that we could do. We could do a sync task, which syncs files between your computer and Synology Drive server in real time, or there's a backup task. Backup files from your computer to your Synology Drive server on a customized schedule. We're going to choose the backup task and then press next. Now it's going to ask us what we would want to back up. So it says select backup source. I'm going to just back up my YouTube videos for now. So we'll scroll down and then find those. We could see Mac Telecom videos. I'll check it off and then we'll select our backup destination. Under my Synology Drive, we have our team folder. Under the team folder, I have my PC backup. I'll click on that and press OK. And then we'll press next. There's a few different backup modes. There's continuous backup, which backs up when files change. There's a manual backup, which backs up only when you click on the backup now button, or there's a scheduled backup. This would be for specific days and times. I'm gonna do continuous backup as I'm always putting new film footage into that folder. Now we review the summary and then press done. We can now see Synology Drive Client is running and it pops up another screen that says achieve more with Synology Drive, sync files on demand, share files and manage versions, and then our Synology Drive is ready to use and we'll press done. We can see on our Drive Client that it's currently backing up my files. There's 31 files that need to be processed. If we click on the top, we could see sync task or we could create a new sync task. And then we could see logs. We have our notifications and then we have global settings. So if we go back to my Synology Drive, we should see some of my files moving over. I'll refresh the page. And here we could see desktop F77LAK8, which is this PC. We'll click on it and then go to my D drive. Under my D drive, there was the Mac Telecom videos. And we could see that it's pushed those video files out to my Synology Drive. Now under that folder of the Mac Telecom videos, I'll create a text file and that should push over to the Synology Drive as well. So we'll create new, we'll do a text document, I'll call it test. And then we should see this push out. Now you can see at the bottom we have our test.txt. So that's how easy it is to back up your computers to Synology NAS using Synology Drive.
Having your documents backed up in one place is still never a good idea. So in another video, we're going to be backing up my full Synology NAS to another Synology NAS offsite. And then we'll also back up my important documents to the cloud. So we have three different places where they're backed up. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. All right, thanks.